Hello, it's Mark from Sicker Crazy. Uh, I'm going to do a quick video today on sanding cues. Uh, I've got two different cues. This is a really beaten up old warped Riley that's due for the dump. Um, it's got loads and loads of oil on it over the years, really deep shine, so probably a little bit more difficult to get the oil off. So we'll definitely use that one. And this is a new cue, so just needs a bit of primary finishing just before we oil it so not too much on there but there's a few things to watch out for if you've got a newish queue uh, and I'll go into that when we get to it. Right, first off if you've got a really old queue what I would do is get some white spirit, get yourself cloth and get any dirt or anything else that's off it that's not basically wood. So. Hopefully you can hear me as I keep turning away from the video. Let's see afterwards. Right. Pop a little bit on. And just generally pull down the cue. If you run your hands over it before you start, <coughs> you'll find any bits that don't really fill. Um, light wood, little bits that stick out and that. So just give it a generally a good clean. It's a fair bit, so definitely worth doing. <coughs> Take any excess off, but this will be evaporating as you do it anyway. Take any excess off, and then generally you're pretty much ready to go straight away. You could leave it for a minute or two, but uh, that was pretty good to me. Just a word of warning: be careful you dispose of these. So put them in a bag and put them straight in the bin. I would. Right. So reasonably clean queue, this is going to be the more difficult of the two. Now what I'd normally do, if that had a ferrule on it, I would get some masking tape, get to the ferrule part and just go around the brass. Because as you're going up and down, if you damage your ferrule, especially with the grits of sandpaper we're going to use, you're going to be in a bit of trouble. So. I'll show you the method, it'll take you ages to put it right if you do that. So, a bit of masking tape, make sure it's something that you can put up and down, that's not really got anything to grip to there, it's old wood. Now, you've got a choice how you start with your sandpapers. Some people go lower than 400 grip to start with. I like to see how it's going to come off, so I would start with a 400 grip and then just see if I can get straight through and if I can actually get to taking wood off. Um, you can start lower, you can go 320, 240, but I would start with a 400 and just, just see how it goes, you might, you might get away with that. So, there we go, 400. Now, generally, I'll show you, probably the easiest bit. If I was doing this on my own, I'd be putting a Q jig up, going across it with a couple of other tools I've got. You're not going to have those. So, for the sake of showing you guys at home <coughs> that are not going to have all these tools, we're going to do it with the least amount of tools that we can. I'd normally have a block for this, you probably won't have that. But we'll start with the 400 anyway, so you can see that. Now, what I would generally do is I put it in between my feet, which you can't see. And I tend to hold the ferrule because then if you're going up to your fingers, then you're okay. You're not going to damage that ferrule. And just go around and just test and see how you're getting on. Now this, I picked this cube for a reason because it's blimmin' old. And it's not even touching that. Not really. We're not getting to any wood there. So we'll go down through the grades until we get to something that's going to help us a bit better. There's a 240 on this one. See how that goes. Hopefully, we won't have to go there. 
to go with the grain as you're doing this. Yes, it really is an old one there, and you may well have to go through a few sheets of this. So we'll see how we get on. This is obviously, just to give you a, a general idea, I'm starting to get through a bit of it now. So just take it up to your fingers as you go. You might. If this goes on for a bit, you might have to pause the video and move on, but I'd like to get to a stage where you get a good idea that we can also get a decent result. So, already there's a hell of a lot of oil and stuff on there. And this is the harder part to do because we're going up to the ferrule, and that's the bit that you don't want to damage, obviously. So as I say, if you want to fast forward, then fine. Yeah, that's really struggling. So it's probably a good example actually. Spent years and years on that. So you're probably not going to come across doing too many of these because you don't want to wreck any old cues, but at least it gives you a good example of how difficult it can be to get off. Now obviously the lower you go down, the more it's going to score the cue. But as I say, I'm not actually bringing any wood out yet. That's of it. We're just getting through all the old bits of oil now. This could be around sort of 1950, 60. So you're talking a hell of a lot on there. Feel free if you know about antique cues to tell me exactly what age. But yeah, even that's really struggling. That's brand new bit. That's really struggling. Yeah, we're getting through some of it. I can't see any wood dust coming up at all. This is probably the lower end, going to 180, and obviously it's an oil on this queue. If you add a lacquer, you may well have to go at the very lowest to 80 grit. As I say, I've worked downwards rather than upwards, so you don't have too much damage to uh, to put wrong. Personally, I'm taking lacquer off, I prefer a scraper. There's a video on the internet that I've done show you the dirt because you can do this really lightly as you go and take as much as you want off. Uh, and I, you get a bit more feel with it. But again, it's it's personal. Other people will tell you what they do and it may well be different. And I keep doing this until we actually see some dust come off. And at the moment, we're not getting it. So we're still working through that old oil layer after layer. Interesting how many coats have had over the years. A fair few. It's starting to feel actually like a piece of wood. To say there's there are massive amounts of dinks and dents and bumps on this. We won't go that too deeply, I'll give you a, a little tip on the, the next cue that we do. But for now we'll just concentrate on trying to get, get through that. As 
And so if you run your hands up and down, you can start to feel the wood going smoother. And it's certainly a lot more dusty. You know if you're actually scratching some of the pieces, you'll you feel it straight away. If I went down to an 80 grit, you'd start to feel that on the ash. Right. And when you get to the ebony, ebony is a darn sight harder than ash for those that, that don't know. Uh, that's not going to be as easy. But you'll start to score that a bit. So, again, I would think if we're at 180 grit, as you get over, I would probably go over to 400 again. Just, just to try and see what that does. It might be different as it goes on the oil. Yeah, and that is actually. So we don't need it as deep down. So we'll stick with the 400 for the minute and see how we get on with that. If you're trying to take out big dents in the ebony, to say it's a whole separate video. I mean, some people just sand them out, but it depends how deep it is really, because what you don't want to do is to sand it out and then feel it in your hand as you're playing. Now, I'm not sure if you can see that. You've got the shine there of all the old oils. It's starting to get into just taking that off now. And as you see there's some if you can see that or not really, but some really old dents. Like the white marks. They're pretty deep. Right, let's carry on. Really getting through a fair bit of paper. Now, no badge on this because it's old. I'll give you some tips when we go on to the, the other cures regards badges. I tend to concentrate on the rounded part of the butt because it's easier to work my way up until eventually you've got to get round for the badge, and that's the bit. Well, you really have to be careful. So, let's go up and down again. Again, following the line. It's having a struggle there, so let's go back down again to a 240 fine one. Go up and down with the grades. Keep as high as you can. You'll start to get a feel for the wood as you're doing it as to whether you're going too low or not. Back in between the feet. So if you go across the grain You'll end up creating a fair bit of damage. This is something that you've got to put right later. Be careful how you move around because if you've got a pretty thin cue and you're bending over on the shaft and moving it backwards and forwards, you, you don't want to mess your cue up. So everything is, is light. Now it's worth noticing or well, noting that you've got a fair bit of dust here. Normally I'd have the machines going, I think I mentioned it, but normally I'd have all the machines going. There, I don't think enough. Just for those that want to know with toxic dust, and a lot of these are, 0.5 microns, fantastic bit of kit that. I'd normally have that on normal machines going, but just for the sake of this, this one video. What I normally do out there is put the finger on the badge and go up to it.
as you get to the ends, stay with the grain. It could be very small strokes, which means you're going to be there a while, so you have to be pretty patient. But again, it's about picking the right sandpaper. You can go hell for leather against it with a very low grit, but when you've got all the scratches in there, if you've gone too low, you can then have to repair it with the other ones, which takes even longer. So just be careful. Now, that doesn't look too bad. That's just to give you an idea. Looks pretty good actually. Right, back up to 400. Again, going round the butt away from the badge. If you drag all of the, the dust off, I tend to use a duster, but see you can use a, a tissue or something. Every now and again you'll get a slight build up of wood and it'll sit on there like it's protruded and it'll feel like you've got to sand it off, but it's not. Um, so just be careful around what is sitting up for the wood. And there's a dink or a dent that's pushing it up and, and what is uh, actually just a bit of dust and what we're going to do is wipe that off. And if you run your hands up and down you'll get a good feeling as to uh, what it's like. Now we've got a few dinks on the butt which so we're not going to sort out on this one. And a couple of dinks actually in the shaft which we'll talk about in a minute. Now you may decide at this stage that you're not happy with the grain, that you want a grain filler in there uh, and obviously that'll be another video but at this point I might think if I don't think the grain's enhanced enough I'll stick a grain filler in. There's a few different ones you can use but so I said some will get into another day. Uh, once that's gone off you then take it down again and it's another process to remove that. But this stage there, if you're just oiling it, make sure all the dust's off as it is there. Sometimes, even though I've gone up to probably 400 there, I would always like to finish with a 600. I think that's really the benchmark of, of where you're about with these. So, once you've gently moved around, now you might be able to see it in the video, Try and get a bit closer, but now at this stage we're actually starting to get a bit of wood dust. Now you're at that stage, that's where you know you're down to the wood, so you're actually removing part of your cue. So that's the stage where you want to stop on that. We're just looking at really making this as smooth as we can now get it, which doesn't take long. Getting up around the butt, you'll be really careful at that point with your badge. So once that's damaged, depending on what badge you've got, you're probably done. But I'll show you how to repair an acrylic one on the next badge in a minute. So you take a bit longer if I was doing this. The last. Right. Now 600 really should be enough, but. Uh, I must admit, in some ways I'll just quickly give it a skim over with a 1200. I mean for a really old queue, we've only been doing this a little while now, that feels really good. As I say, you, you, you do some work to get the, the dents and dinks out, but that feels pretty good. And where the queue's quite old, between the grain and the ash, some of the ash has been sanded over the years by the feel of it and the hard grain's still up and the ash has been sanded out of in between because obviously it's the softer part of the wood so you, you want to take the smallest amount of wood off that you can and that feels pretty good and so that stage there I would, I would start to think about putting some oil on it 
and just dragging it down but that, that's really for another video but that gives you an idea of where to go through the grade so I always start with a 400 it might not be enough and other people start with different grades but for me it's a good indicator as to whether to go up or down and you're probably always going to go down but if you can get away with 400 without taking part of your queue out you would off fantastic and then go from there big part of this is not to damage the ferrule but if you do damage it you fit another one if it's that bad but the, the biggest part of all of this is your badge so if you get the stage where you damage your badge you're going to be in trouble then so I would take a long time over that a lot longer than I've just taken there clearly that hasn't got a badge so, so as smooth as you're going to get so that would be a good start if you're queuing with that now that would be lovely it really would so let's have a look at a new queue right now with a new queue I always start around the 600, always. Um, we don't have any lacquer or anything on there whatsoever. So the first thing I'll be doing is running my hands up and down and trying to feel if there's anything wrong with this queue at all. And it's very, very easy to move around, touch the side, even a touch sometimes can leave a little dink, a dent or anything. So we just need to know what we're up against before we start. Now this is, uh, I think this is a 62 inch queue, so this is an unusually long one that's uh, put together. Now you can probably see the ferrule, hopefully you can focus on that. Nice and shiny. I always like to shine them up to start with before I do anything, just so I can see if there's any damage whatsoever. Now, again, First thing I do is put some masking tape around the queue and a bit of blood there. Trying to get it on the queue. Just be careful, you, you want it to go as far down the ferrule as you can so we can protect as much as we can, basically. I'll put a decent bit on there, just so you can take the weight of the queue. I'm going to bleed everywhere. Right, good. Now, this one yesterday, when I looked at it, I was running my hands up and down, and I could just feel just a little little not a dent but just a little dink in the queue now lots of people say well get yourself some sandpaper sand it out it's gone but you're taking away the wood so bef before you do that I would always try and I, I think this is pretty successful if you can see that back down to there right a couple of cotton buds dip it in some water um, if you've got oil on it already, then just get a bit of 10,000 grit steel wool and just gently rub around that area just to take a little bit of the oil. Soak these, put them on the dent, the dink, whatever you want to call it, a couple of bits of sellotape, leave it overnight. If you've dented the wood, so you've compressed it, what you're trying to do now is to get a bit of water in the wood and make it expand back out again. If it comes out again, then really you can just get a very light bit of sandpaper or the steel wool and just rub it. I always start with the steel wool. I always start with the least amount and just see if you can just take it down again. And if, if you've managed to do that and you've managed to swell it out again and do it, then you've pretty much got it back to its original state. And what you can do then is just get a little bit of oil, just rub it in, drag the excess oil off after about two or three minutes. Don't put much on at all and then let it dry, and then maybe the next day, a little bit of 10,000 grit steel wool. And just go over it, just gently. If it doesn't come right out, do it again the next day. And do it sort of two or three days. If it's a big dent, there's other ways to do that. Um, but I'm not going to do that now. Right, so minor ones, take it out like that. And this particular one, 
it's gone completely. So, yeah, good. And I, all I did was stick them in there last night, and we're about 11 o'clock in the morning, so it's not sat there too long. Right, things to watch out for on a new HQ, feral. And the big thing here, badge. That's an acrylic badge, so it's about, I think that one is three mil deep. So if you damage that, you've got a bit of repairing to do. If you go over that with 600 grit, you're going to scratch it to pieces. So you just got to avoid it. And what you've got to be really careful of is you put your finger on it and you're going up and down to actually take the wood away. And the, the paper is so thin it goes up under your finger and scratches just the top of the badge. So you've got to be careful there. And we'll come on to that in a minute. Now these, when they're like this, are pretty good. So a little bit in there. We'll have a look at in a minute, just in the grain, but yeah, lots of grain on it, feels pretty good. So this should be quite a straightforward one. White foxwood, so it's not like um, ebony, so it should be pretty easy to go over. And with no dinks or dents anywhere in the ebony, should be good. Right, start with 600. Again, even though I've got some masking tape on there. I like to put my fingers there. Bottom the queue in between there, hold it with your knees and be careful not to bleed all over the queue. And just gently, really carefully, and I mean carefully, make sure that your two fingers are hitting each other and you can see the paper's not scratching your ferrule to bits. And you should just about see bits of dust coming off. Now that's fine, so we're already at the point where 600 is pretty good on there. So we'll gently go down, twisting the queue as we go, not taking too much off. It's hard anything on that. And we start with a minimum all the time. I mean, when I'm doing these and they're a new queue, this is a new bit of paper, but I tend to want to use an old bit so it's a bit more clogged up. And that way I'm not going mad at it, hammering songs. And this is not a lot of effort. You take the last one that we tried, the old, I think it was a Riley queue, that really did struggle to come off. Also going down through the grits. And I'm feeling that, that's. That's really smooth. Coming down over the ebony again, don't forget your dust mask. Coming down again. Got that actually in, in my thigh where you can't see it, give me a bit of stability. I'll turn this around. Be careful. And as we go up this side, be careful of the badge. So I tend to wrap it around the opposite side of the badge so I can go all the way up. really not taking much at all off of this. Now spin it round. I've got my finger over the badge but a bit further down. And I'm going over the flat of the queue which is the bit that's spliced off where the badge is. Just going on the edge of it. Trying not to cut myself to pieces with this paper. That's pretty good. So again Really carefully round that badge. Still see minute bits of dust coming off. So we're about right there. And if you didn't catch it in the first part of the video, go with the grain. Anything across the grain is going to create a scratch. If the grade's the wrong, wrong grade, and you're going to have to repair that. Now, I've not got anything on that. Scratch this little white do. So I feel that. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, a little bit in there. There's the first check if you feel anything. Just, just feel something under my fingers. So get, get the right grade. Mm -hmm. 
barely taken any dust because it's it's clogged. Just want it to feel right. It's barely moving anything at all because it's, it's clogged up, but that's that's fine. I don't mind going up and down a few more times. So it feels good. So the temptation is to get another have a bit of sandpaper out that's a bit more aggressive and take loads of wood off but just resist that right. so just run your hands around really lightly you can pick any deviations up at all if you want to feel that you're giving it the best possible effort, so if you're going to go to this length, make sure it's perfect. Just a bit in there. So if you're going through the grades and throwing your sandpaper down, just have a quick check to make sure it's the right bit you're picking up. I've seen that done before. Stick some nice deep scratches in your cube and pick up an 80 grip without looking at the paper. To say this isn't taking anything at all off. But if you're going to go this length, as I say, why not get it perfect? Very good. Right. get to this on a newish queue as much as 600 is fine personally I just like to give it a quick run over for the 1200 so it's not really necessary but it just makes me feel like I've got it as glass like as I can it only takes a second or two Why not? So when you're doing this, be careful everything around you. I've got a, about a 30 foot workshop up here and I'm probably working about, about 6 foot. Um, but it's just actually doing some modifications and changing everything around. But you always turn that cue around and all of a sudden it touches something and then you're in trouble. badge. Now if you scratch that badge at any point, I don't know if you can see that. Let's try and get this in. Can you focus? Just about. Now if you scratch that badge, so it's acrylic, it's about three mil deep, depending on which ones I get. Sometimes I get them six mil, take them down, but this is a three mil one. So there you go. If you get a good idea, if I, so I twist it. You can probably just see a couple of bits on there, hopefully. Not prepared earlier. What I would do with that is get 1200 paper and just run it straight over the top. Now this will put some minute scores into it. If you've got any of those deep scratches in there, it will take it down and you just keep doing this until they're pretty much gone. And what you can do is it will drag some of the glue and anything else on the top right over the surface, but the point of it is to get rid of the deep scratches. And at the moment, so I don't know if you can see that again, whatever. Look, you can probably, there you go, you can see loads of scratches in there, I would think. There you go, so we've, we've got rid of a lot of the deep ones. Just 
just going to have a quick look under the microscope we've got. piece of 3000 grit. Now this takes a bit of effort. So again, I just rub it over with the grain again because you're still going over wood whichever you, way you like it. And what you might do is drag a piece of wood off and then rub it straight over the top of the surface of the acrylic. So I like to give that a good polish. If it doesn't work first time, go back to 1200, put this on again. It's difficult to see in this light. But Three thousand grit. As I say, pause the video, change the video wherever you are to see the different bits. But you don't have to watch me sanding all the time. But all I would do is just carry on doing this until it's completely done. If you really can't see it, you can put a bit of water on. But obviously that will go on the wood and might, might make it feel good to start with. Just do that and then just keep going up until you're done. It's not far off, I don't think it's quite there yet. But uh, you get the idea. Only acrylic, you know, obviously, and see through. If you've got anything like uh, the white plastic badges, that's clearly not going to work. Let's see if we can get you reasonably close and you can get a rough idea where I'm at. I can get there. So, you get a good idea it's not quite there but about another five minutes it would be anyway right so gone down to 1200 that feels absolutely lovely can't feel anything on it there's no dinks no dents good stuff and that'll be ready for oiling so if you're doing all that you can see, you can just see over in the corner there. I've got a load of other ones ready to go now that, that I've just done this morning. And we'll get them and do the oiling on another video. So I hope that's given you a good idea. If you've got any questions, obviously email me. Uh, if you've got a good idea now, anyway, how to approach some old cues and some new ones when you don't have um, all the machinery I've got. Anyway, see you on the next video.